a two millimeter layer of paint is applied to one side of the following surface. Find the approximate volume of paint used. Assume X and Y are measured in meters. The surface generated when the upper portion of the circle X squared plus Y squared equals 100 on the interval from negative 8 to 8 is revolved around the X axis. So let's begin with a quick glance at the circle that's being described here. So here's my circle. This is um, x squared plus y squared equals 100. Um, and I am told that we're interested in the upper portion of the circle between x equals negative 8, so about here, and x equals positive 8, about here. And we're going to um, create a surface by revolving this curve around the x-axis. Now, um, kind of our overall goal here um, is to find the volume of the paint applied to the surface. And we're told how thick that layer of paint is. Um, now, what we're going to actually have to do to accomplish that goal is we're going to have to start by finding the surface area of um, the surface created by this revolution. Um, and then once we find that surface area, um, then from there we can figure out the volume um, of that paint. So to figure out the surface area, um, I, I would like this to be expressed in the form y equals f of x. And since we're going around the x-axis here, and this looks like um, here a function of x, uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my original expression here, x squared plus y squared equals 100, and solve this for y. Alright, so if I do that, I have y squared equals 100 minus x squared, and then y equals plus or minus the square root of 100 minus x squared. Um, but I need to know which one of those to choose, the plus or the minus. Now the plus, um, y equals positive square root of 100 minus x squared actually represents the top half of the circle, right, where the y values are positive, and y equals negative root 100 minus x squared is the bottom half of the circle. So the um, function I'm interested in then is this positive square root of 100 minus x squared, and um, specifically on the interval of x values between negative 8 and 8. This is what I'm going to use um, to compute uh, the surface of my um, revolution. All right, so let's um, work on finding this surface area. So if you recall, our surface area formula um, for revolutions around the x-axis looks like this, the integral from a to b of 2 pi f of x um, times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So we know what f of x is, we have our function. Uh, let's work on finding its derivative. So we have f of x, which is 100 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So um, the derivative then is going to be 1 half times 100 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power times uh, the derivative of the inside, which would be negative 2x in this case. So if I simplify, that's going to give me negative x over the square root of 100 minus x squared. And let's go ahead and square that as well, since that's what we ultimately want. Um, so if I square this quantity, I'm going to get an x squared on the top and a 100 minus x squared on the bottom. So let's put this all back into our integral and see what we need to do next. The bounds on my integral in this case need to be x values, and I'm told that I'm looking at the interval from negative 8 to 8. And then I've got 2 pi f of x. 
So 2 pi square root of 100 minus x squared. And then square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, which was x squared over 100 minus x squared. And we're integrating with respect to x. So in the next step, um, let's pull that 2 pi out front. And then let's also go ahead and combine these square roots so that I have a product under a single root. Um, so I'm going to have 100 minus x squared times a quantity 1 plus x squared over 100 minus x squared. And then under that root, I can distribute this quantity, 100 minus x squared, to both the 1 and to this fraction here. So if I do that, I'm going to have the square root. If I multiply this uh, 100 minus x squared by 1, I just get, of course, 100 minus x squared. And if I multiply it by this fraction, uh, the uh, 100 minus x squared are so going to cancel, and I'm just going to be left with x squared. So plus x squared. Well, this looks like it's going to work out really nicely for us. Under the square root, I'm just left with 100. So I have 2 pi times the integral from negative 8 to 8 of 10 dx. So if I take my antiderivative, I have 2 pi out front, and then the antiderivative of 10 is 10x. And we're going from negative 8 to 8. So I've got 2 pi, um, and then it looks like I've got 80 minus negative 80 or 2 pi times 160, or 320 pi. Um, now, we were told in the beginning that x was measured in meters. Um, so then the units on this should be meters squared, uh, because remember that we did just find an area, a surface area. Okay, but now what we're ultimately interested in finding, um, of course, is the volume of the paint, if we scroll back up here, uh, the volume of the layer of paint that's applied uh, to this surface. Um, so then what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this surface area, And we're just going to multiply it by the thickness of the paint, and that's going to give us the additional dimension we need um, to get to the volume. Now, uh, the paint here is given to us in millimeters, um, but to be consistent with our units, we can um, convert that to meters. So 2 millimeters is 2 thousandths of a meter. Um, so, then I'm multiplying by 2 over 1,000 here, meters. Okay, so if I actually go through with my calculations here, it looks like I get um, 640 pi over 1,000 cubic meters. Um, and if I get an approximate value there, uh, it would be the following. 2.01 cubic meters of paint. All right, so here we simply found the surface area of the um, surface that was described to us. Um, and then to find the volume of paint, we uh, multiply that surface area by an extra dimension, uh, the thickness of the paint.